you do when your art's not selling? Yeah. Throw a temper tantrum. Temper tantrum. Get so mad. <laughs> I don't, I don't think that's going to sell your art. Those are all very unproductive things. Don't do those things. <laughs> Hola, you amazing artists. Today we're going to answer a question from Gina Marie Hammer, which is, what do you do when your art isn't selling? This question actually comes at a really good time because we just got out of a dip that uh, was going on with us where the art just kind of like dipped a little bit towards the beginning of the year. The after Christmas lull. The after Christmas lull. 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 And you're like, lull. lull. So there's one thing that's pretty guaranteed, whether or not you're doing art or you're running any kind of business, is that you are going to run through periods of time where things slow down a little bit. You're going to go through peaks and valleys. Art is a special thing and doesn't fall into the guidelines of most product sales like what do you do when your product isn't selling this is how you should advertise it and all that stuff like it doesn't work that way you are either buying a particular piece of jewelry for someone or for yourself or you are buying a particular piece of art that means something to you or means something to someone else. So it doesn't fall into that criteria of like, which is the best laundry detergent? We should do our marketing like this. We should do our marketing like that. It just doesn't work that way. It's not gonna help you increase your sales. Yeah, it's not like springtime is here, so throw out that old dusty artwork and get some new. Yeah, it doesn't work that way. I get a lot of questions from you guys about going up against big box stores and things like that. And really, it's not the same stuff. You're not dealing with the same type of product you are dealing with much personal things. When you are selling your art, you are selling you. You are selling your creation, your meaning behind it, which is one of the reasons that I push always be true to yourself and create the kind of artwork that you create because it's much easier for you to talk about that artwork and sell that artwork and explain what that artwork means than if you just create some type of item that is necessarily a product yeah, tell your story, because you always be better at telling your story than anyone else. Yeah, so what kind of things do I do when things slow down? The first thing I do is take the opportunity to work on projects that maybe I had put off because I was a little bit busier during the busy season, so I had commissions and things that I had to work on. So my inventive pieces that I wanted to experiment on or create, I didn't necessarily have the time to create or to put enough focus on it. So usually when things slow down, that's what I focus on, which essentially gives me another form of artwork to put out there, something new and fresh and invigorating for the people that are collecting my work to see. Pace has slowed down, so the laboratory has opened. Yes. Ha ha ha. So during this lull, one of the things that I worked on was my Curate Your Space prints. I have these Curate Your Space prints, which are the smaller prints. Since I released them, people have been asking for the larger size, and I haven't done the larger size because I didn't necessarily have the time to invest in what kind of materials I was going to use for the larger size because it's, it's a different system than doing the smaller ones and honestly I was a little bit scared to do it so I was using the fact that I was pretty busy to not do it I was using that as an excuse nice excuse Rafi yeah yeah you get to you you'll you'll find out that there are a lot of excuses that you use to not do something because really you're just kind of scared to do it and fail and just like anything where you put yourself outside of your comfort zone and do it the end results end up being pretty amazing and I was really excited about the new stuff. Now, when I released the new size prints, did they like take off and sell right away? No, no, they didn't. They did not. But I know that as a result of doing that, I have 340 new items on my online store that are a possibility that they will sell. Yeah, and look, focusing on creating something new is 100% always better than focusing on not doing anything. Yeah, what can easily happen is that sales go down a little bit and you're not selling anything, and then all of a sudden you get completely discouraged. The first thought that comes to mind is like, my art sucks, I suck, everything I do sucks, people don't like me, 
There are all kinds of things that you're gonna go through in your mind that are gonna tell you to stop doing what you're doing and just give up. When in actuality, you should take that opportunity to do as much as you possibly can and show your stuff as much as possible. Let's say that you just started and you're not selling any work or you have been selling work and things just kind of slowed down for you. You gotta think to yourself, what am I gonna do during this time? Am I gonna be productive and try and create something new or try and like push myself outside my comfort zone and show my stuff in as many places as possible or am I gonna just allow myself to get discouraged and give up definitely not gonna be a productive solution to be like I quit I quit what it takes to keep going is to maintain your focus on being an artist right here and now. Now, a professional artist is defined by somebody who does that as their profession. That is their main source of income. I am a professional artist. But if you have not made it your main source of income, it does not make you not an artist. You are still an artist. You are still somebody who creates something, who expresses themselves through the creations that you create. That makes you an artist. What you want to do is cross the threshold eventually into being a professional artist where this is your main source of income. And in order to be able to do that, you have to be ready for the fact that sometimes your art is not going to sell right away, but every work of art that you create will sell eventually. I understand that maybe you have bills to pay and you are looking for a way to bring in an income. Sometimes there may be some compromises that need to be made. In the very beginning when I first started my art career I was doing wooden signs while I was creating a lot of my original work. My wooden signs did well and a lot of my buyers of the wooden signs bought my original work as well. It didn't take very long to realize that I hated doing wooden signs and so I stopped doing the wooden signs even though people would show up looking for the wooden signs but I had become the wooden sign guy and that was definitely not who I wanted to become. But I did try it. I think that that's one of the things that I want to express here. Try new things. Even things that you might think like, oh I'll never do that, I hate doing that. Try it just to see if you happen to like it because you will never know for sure whether or not it is an insecurity that's keeping you from doing it or whether it is something that you really truly don't want to do. So take the opportunity during those times to push outside of your comfort zone and try something new. Maybe you're like me and you don't want to do the beach scenes, the, the, the sea oats and all that stuff up on the beach. But I did find a way to compromise by creating something that I love to create that still falls into the criteria, which are abstract beach scenes based on the feelings and the colors that I get when I go to the beach. And so I'm still satiating what some people want. Obviously, some people want the traditional beach scenes but then I get to create something new that is outside of my comfort zone that was something that I was like I will never create this that people have not seen from me before and so I create a new part of me that is consistent with everything that I create. It took me about six to eight months to actually like make consistent money and even then I wasn't making a lot of money. During that time I was painting as much as possible and I had no money to buy art materials. I was finding pieces of wood to paint on, people were giving me like their old paints, I that's where I started using some house paints. I created artwork with whatever I had available to me in order to be able to show and express myself as much as possible. Even the wooden signs, those were wooden crates that were being thrown away by a produce place that said, hey, if you want the wooden crates, you can have them. And so I grabbed those wooden crates and made signs out of them. I did whatever I possibly could to create as much work as I possibly could to really, really practice my craft and put my stuff out there as much as possible in order to get people to know who I was. And I understood that chances were I was going to starve for a little while in the beginning because nobody knew who I was. Why would they buy stuff from somebody that they don't even know who they are? Marketing, there's this thing called the rule of three. And essentially what that means is that people need to see you at least three to seven times before they become familiarized with you. If they only see you once, they're not gonna remember you. They're not gonna remember what you do. They're not gonna remember your art. Marketing places do ads and billboards and all that stuff because they're trying to get into your psyche, into your subconscious. So the more places that you are showing your 
work, the more places where people can meet you, the more they're going to remember you and the more chances are that they'll come and buy something from you. And I'd like to add that if they meet you and you're excited about things you're working on rather than focused on trying to make money, you're going to give them a way better vibe. I've walked into and I've also experienced desperation like you need to sell something and it's really it, it's really a put off. It freaks people out, man. Don't yeah. do it. If you're working on new things and you're talking to them about the artwork that you already created that they're looking at and you're talking to them about this exciting new project that you're working on, that is a totally different vibe than like, buy my art. It's on sale. Buy it. Buy it. Buy it. During our recent slow time, I did take the opportunity to try a couple of shows I hadn't done before. Was that lucrative? No. If you're going through a slow period, it means that you have the time to look and see how many venues you could set up for yourself, how many new works of art you could create. Focus on the things that you have control over, which are creating new work and getting your stuff out there as much as possible. If you are complaining that you are not selling any work, but you are only showing your work out there once a month, then you, those are things that you have to consider. How many opportunities are there for people to buy your artwork? And I understand it's easy to put your stuff online, but here's my personal advice. It is much more powerful to meet somebody face to face and to interact with somebody and leave an impression on them than to do it online. Online, people are going through different online stores and seeing a multitude of stuff. But when somebody is looking at a piece of art right in front of them and it's tangible and they could see it and feel it and, and really, really take it in instead of like a 2D image that they're seeing on a computer screen, there is something different and powerful about that. You can show your art out in front of people. And I'm not saying if you don't want to do festivals, you don't have to do festivals, but find venues, find ways to get your art out in front of people as much as you possibly can. And I know that it's tough because sometimes you are feeling that desperation. I know that I've felt it and nothing happens. I don't I don't sell any work when I'm in a place where I'm like I gotta sell this I gotta sell this. not only does nothing happen but then you're frustrated and and it's easy for you to get discouraged in that place that's why I say focus on something else focus on what you can do what you do have control over so that you can be excited yeah so you can be excited and that excitement is what will translate to other people that excitement is contagious to other people if you're excited about your art other people get excited about your art. Yeah, because look, the fact of the matter is nobody ever said, man, that artist looks sad and desperate. I got to get me a yeah. piece of that. I got <laughs> to buy me a piece of that sad and desperate art. And that's it, you guys. Gina, hopefully this answered your question. I know that it's it's a little all over the place. It's such a wide, varied subject, and there are so many answers that different people would have. My answer, to make it simple, is to take your focus off of the desperation and move towards something that you are excited about. Work on new things, show your stuff at different places, new venues, do something new that gets you excited about your art career. And if you guys have any questions or anything to add on what you do when sales are a little bit slow, uh, please add those in the comment section below. And thank you so much for watching, you guys. You guys are absolutely amazing. I totally freaking adore you. And if you like this and you want to watch more like this, just click right over here to subscribe. And that's it. Say goodbye, Clee. Good day. Adios.